Good morning to, to all the Excellencies, distinguished participants. Uh, we, we didn't coordinate uh, this panel, so the, actually the, 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 the phenomena that have been recorded uh, are the same. Uh, the numbers are similar, but I want to, uh, I will condense my, my uh, presentation portion uh, so that we can uh, put the screens up. Uh, but I want to go over a few numbers to make uh, general, a few general statements. Okay. Uh, so this is basically uh, election results from the 1990s. From July 1988 to um, November 1996. And uh, it's hard to see, I can't even see it myself, but the, the significance of this table really is to show you that uh, in the 1990s, there were 22 parties that got elected that had presence in parliament. 22 parties, so a couple of dozen. And you know, they have a, a lot of party hopping and uh, they would uh, disband a party, they would form a new banner. Uh, this is very much the um, recurrent pattern. Uh, the elections didn't matter that much because they would go into a coalition and then uh, they would have some corruption uh, and then they would uh, uh, lose legitimacy. There was a coup, of course, in 1991, in February 1991. Uh, which set up the March 1992 election. Uh, and Samaki Tam was a pro-military party, and then uh, it formed a government, and then it eventually was um, was deposed or overthrown by street demonstrators in uh, May 1992. So, uh, this another significance of this table is to show you that uh, the big players have changed. Uh, the only one that has stayed the same uh, is the Democrat Party. But before we had big parties under new aspirations, Samaki Tam and so on, and they have realigned themselves, and a lot of them have joined Thai Rak Thai subsequently. Uh, okay, so lots of small parties, very few big players, but altogether many parties, a couple of dozens. Now, I just want to put up the, the, the Bangkok electoral trends in the 1990s, from July 1988 to November 1996. Uh, basically, Bangkok has shifted, and the significance of this table is basically is Bangkok has shifted from a Prashad Gon Thai base to a Palang Tham uh, base to a Democrat base in the 1990s, and then to Thai Rak Thai, and then of course back to the Democrat, uh, which we'll see in the subsequent table. Uh, now we have uh, some patterns on the um, the regional, the Thai elections are very regionalized. Uh, the Democrat Party has done consistently well in the South. It has dominated the South, but it has not uh, done as well in the Northeast, the North. Uh, the Northeast uh, has shifted. Uh, it used to be the uh, stomping ground of new aspirations. Uh, subsequently, it shifted to um, Thai Rak Thai uh, based on the patronage networks of new aspiration that went to um, TRT subsequently. Palang Tham, um, its demise uh, explains partly why uh, a lot of the Palang Tham voters went to the Democrat. Uh, okay. Now, these are results from the 2000s. For, from 2001 uh, to 2011. January 2001, July 2011. And uh, the significance of this table, um, these numbers suggest that uh, there has only been one party that has won all Thai elections in the 21st century so far, as Thai Rak Thai. Thai Rak Thai, uh, People's Power Party, right, and then uh, now Pua Thai. And the numbers are consistent. They dominate the North and Northeast, together the North and Northeast, more than half. Uh, the Democrat Party keeps winning the, um, uh, the South by, by large margins. Uh, Thai Rak Thai was not able to really penetrate the South. Uh, now, the interesting uh, outcome was the, the, the Bangkok. And we have here, uh, Bangkok in February 2005 went overwhelmingly to Thai Rak Thai, 32 of 37. Democrat Party only won four seats, and in Cha Thai won. Uh, so how could that election in February 2005 shifted so dramatically by 2007 when the table was turned? Democrat won 27. 
um, People's Power or Tyrak Thai uh, regrouped, won nine. So somewhere along the way, of course, we had military coup, we had all the crisis in the streets in uh, 2005, 2006, uh, but it's a puzzle that, that I think has not been solved. Why, uh, you know, only several months after winning a landslide re-election, becoming the first party to complete a full term, first party to be re-elected, first party to command a one-party rule, the Thai Rak Thai um, lose its ground in Bangkok uh, to February 2005. The protests against uh, Thaksin began to, uh, the same year, uh, around August or so, 2005. So uh, that, that is something that I've been interested in, uh, but it has not been solved, that puzzle. Uh, now we look at December 2007. Uh, results, uh, and Ajahn Tamara has done this uh, already, very close on the party list, but you have to remember that, that we had a new constitution, which was gerrymandered, so that the north, the north, the northeast especially, you know, we had this uh, ten zones, right? The zones. So uh, the, each zone had uh, party list MP. So they basically diluted and combined some of the, um, the constituencies that uh, were strong on the Tyrak Thai PPP uh, and combine them with central regions, lower northeast and so on. So th this partly explained uh, uh, the result very close. But then again, based on this result, we had this uh, uh, reform that Jan Tamara put up to make the party list not 100, but 125. 125 on the assumption. And the person who led uh, this reform, of course, uh, was uh, Anita um, uh, Professor Rector. Um, and it was really another way of uh, gerrymandering, right? Uh, rigging the rules so that the, 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 the odds would be stacked against, you know, PPP, Pur Thai in this case. Uh, but even 125, it didn't work. Uh, Pur Thai still won uh, by a large, uh, large margin. Uh, 61 to 44 on the party list. Uh, and uh, in this election, last election we had, there were more smaller parties. This, uh, they succeeded in making, kind of breaking up uh, the party system a bit. The party system was consolidating, but now you have smaller parties because there's no more 5% rule. So that, uh, you know, if you initially, you have to have command 5% to get the PR party list seats. Uh, so now you have 1%, 2%, and Chu uh, Witt's party, you know, he has, what, uh, four. Um, so that's equivalent to about uh, 300,000, uh, 600,000 people. Uh, so the, the, the trend here is the same as before, and this time I think uh, Putai has uh, regained its ground that was lost uh, uh, from 2005. Um, now, we can make a few uh, general uh, conclusions, and here's a consolidated table. Uh, July 2011, very clear, uh, went back to um, 500 seats and uh, Pure Thai won overwhelmingly 265. Uh, December 2007, that was the, uh, the Democrat gained some ground there, but uh, couldn't hold on to it even though they was in power for two and a half years after that. Uh, February 2005, overwhelming, just a, a, a thumping victory. Uh, January 2001, of course, um, we've seen these numbers already. Okay. So the party system has uh, gravitated towards bigger parties, uh, notwithstanding the, the July 2011 uh, uh, move to um, you know the few parties that had just one seat or two seats. There is a gravitational pull towards a two-party system, Democrat and Thaksin's party. Now we can call Thaksin's party Tyrak type, PPP, now Pur Thai. Um, the electoral patterns are very regionalized very regionalized. The South, Democrat. Uh, Northeast, North, um, Thaksin's party. Bangkok has shifted uh, over time, but uh, Pur Thai gained a little bit of ground uh, on percentage terms in July 2011. Uh, so uh, the Democrats' hold on Bangkok uh, cannot be taken for granted. Uh, and uh, we can also say that uh, Bang well, Bangkok has gone from Prashakon Thai, Palang Tam, Democrat, Thai Rak Thai, back to Democrat. The Democrats have a dilemma. They can't win elections. They can't win elections. So uh, it's not good for the Thai electoral system for them to be weak, because then you have a domination, uh, dominance of just, you know, poor Thai and Thaksin's party. So they have to really uh, rethink and uh, revamp the entire structure. Uh, what they need to do, in my view, is to um, do two or, th two or three things. I mean, first, they have to um, 
step away from, not reject, but step away from the sufficiency economy um, paradigm. Um, it doesn't win elections. It, 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 can, it was very popular in the late 1990s. It can be popular again, you know, the Eurozone crisis, the American sovereign debt problems and so on and in the future. Uh, the Asian economic growth traje trajectories and the growth of welfare states in Asia will mean that uh, Thailand and other countries in Asia will come up against similar challenges. So sufficiency, uh, attraction, uh, I think that in the future may have some currency. But in the meantime, for the Democrat Party to win elections, they have to, 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 to step away from, not, not so much reject or drop, because it doesn't win them elections. Uh, and then, of course, they have to change the entire leadership, the whole slate. Uh, you know the opposite, and um, unfortunately, uh, Gorn has become the, the opposite number two. Uh, so they have to get rid of all of them. But I don't know how they're going to do that. Uh, Surin Piswan, Dr. Surin Piswan, uh, is uh, his term at the ASEAN Secretary is coming up. Um, so he is a potential, but they have to think about who's going to lead them, and, and they need to have that uh, grassroots. Uh, Profile. So perhaps uh, going back to the same formula that they had before, uh, a leader and a secretary general, or the leaders of Bangkok, urban, uh, perhaps more sophisticated, and perhaps a secretary general, uh, more um, rural based, that they can uh, work the patronage networks, and maybe someone from the Northeast. The Democrats used to win some seats in the Northeast uh, under Sutatangan Moon. Uh, in the 1990s, but recently they have not won uh, Northeast seats, and as long as they cannot win the Northeast seats, they can win Thai ele elections. Uh, so they have a problem. Uh, you know, they need a step aside, step away from sufficiency economy because it doesn't win elections. They need to change the entire leadership slate, and then they have to come up with a program. They have no, they have no program. They have no agenda, right? Uh, and it would be good for them to have an agenda because it would make a more competitive uh, electoral environment. It would be good for the Thai electorate and Thai people. So to have uh, an agenda, of course, they have to stop, you know, the systematic daily badgering uh, and uh, complaining, whining, and uh, all the other things that they do every day, which means that they have to change their entire organizational culture. The culture of the Democrats is that you advance by being sharp tongue, right? You do some research, you speak well, you're articulate, perhaps even eloquent, and then you um, you kind of take down the other guys, and then you kind of rise up. Uh, so that that is the hardest part, changing the, uh, the, the organizational, uh, uh, operational culture of the Democrat Party. But, you know, I think it's good for them to get their act together because it would be good for the Thai uh, electoral environment. Um, Thai Rak Thai uh, has set a record. Thai Rak Thai, PPP per Thai, they won all elections, uh, one party rule under Thai Rak Thai, uh, and you know, they won the all elections in the 21st century, and they looked like they would be winning elections uh, indefinitely as long as the Democrat Party is weak. So this is why I've titled uh, my, my talk uh, as a no exit, there's no exit uh, elections and democracy in Thailand. And now I have uh, just five, six uh, points to, 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 to bring across. Um, and of course, we've heard uh, this morning uh, an eloquent uh, uh, panoramic uh, survey uh, of the highest intellect, uh, intellect from uh, Ajahn Ben Anderson. Uh, he made the point that uh, you know the, uh, there's been a decline of uh, monarchies, right? The, the decline of the rule by by few and by one. And on the flip side, of course, <coughs> there's a rise in the rule of uh, many and all, um, the rise of democracies uh, around the world. Uh, so uh, the first thing is that uh, to notice, you know, this vicious cycle that we have talked about often in Thailand where very easy to figure Thai elections and politics because you'd have elections and then you'd have an elected government and the elected government full of corrupt politicians would engage in corruption and then they would lose um, legitimacy, <laughs> paving the way for a military coup, uh, which then set up uh, an assembly to draft a new constitution which eventually lead to the election. This <coughs> vicious cycle is diluting, is uh, dissipating uh, in its uh, potency and reliability. The last successful coup, of course, was September 9, 2006. But the successful coup before that um, 
was in October 1976. We had a coup in 1977, failed under, I think, Chalat, Hiran Sili. And then uh, we had a failed coup that should not have failed in April 1981. Uh, a failed coup in September uh, 1985. And then, of course, uh, a successful coup. So successful coup, uh, February 1991. And before that, uh, October 1976. So 15 years apart, exactly. 76, 91. 91, 2006. Now, 15 years apart for the last two, three successful coups. You contrast this with, with our coup average, right? our coup average. Um, the Thai coup average is 4.4 years per coup. So the interval is expanding. It's, we will see fewer coups, not that we will not see another, another coup, but uh, it's more difficult to have a coup for various reasons. So that's the first point to, um, to note. Uh, coups in constitutions perhaps giving way uh, more and more to elections and constitutions. Uh, the coups decre decreasing in frequency. <coughs> right. uh, first point. Second point, there is no exit from elections and democracy. Uh, and this is not a new point. It's not a unique point. One might say that, you know, in uh, 1973, the, the crisis of October 1973, was precipitated by um, a military dictatorship that uh, you know banned political parties, uh, abrogated the constitution. So the calls for constitutional rule uh, laid the way for for the overthrow of the military dictatorship. Uh, there have been calls for constitutions and uh, um, elections uh, over time since 1932, but more uh, frequent uh, in the last uh, few decades. So. All previous coups eventually led to elections. Um, but in the past, elections were more or less, it didn't matter much. They weren't meaningless, but they didn't matter much. Because, you know, the same faces come in, uh, it's some vote buying, and they have a coalition government, they divide up the pie, and they undertake engage in graft and corruption, and we know all too well how that works. Uh, and they lose legitimacy and so on. But in the last uh, decade, as the time to Madai, as we have uh, put up in their slice. It's very clear the elections matter now. There has been a, a bonding between parties and policies with uh, you know, electorate and people. And that's why this party keeps winning, because it has an agenda that somehow uh, appealed. Right? Um, so from a very weak, um, ineffectual uh, party system, uh, the party system has been strengthened. Third, without an exit, there have been attempts to find deviations and detours <coughs> around this uh, democratic game and democratic room. Uh, and the manifestations of this uh, deviation and, and detour, uh, you know, uh, numerous. Uh, at the forefront, of course, there was a new constitution of 2007 that was really anti-politician, anti-political party. You can dissolve parties easily, ban politicians easily. Uh, so we had that uh, 2007 constitution. And if you look <coughs> you look at the National Legislative Assembly, right, the, pool, the coup appointed assembly, you look at the 242 members, you look at the 100 members of the Constitution Drafting Committee in 2006, 2007. Um, you will see all the people in Thai politics today. I mean, all the people who are opposed to the constitutional amendments are the people who wrote this constitution, plus plus. Um, so it's one manifestation. Another manifestation uh, front and center is this um, judicialization, right? Uh, the, 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 the plan was, uh, okay, you have a coup, and then uh, you disband this party, the Thaksin's party, you rewrite the rules, and then the Democrat, you know, they're kind of, even the playing field and maybe stacking the odds in favor of, of the Democrats. Um, so judicialization, judicial coups, um, we can call it even in a political judiciary, not politicized, but political, takes on a political role. Um, the army's uh, assistance to the, the Democrat party in December 2008, there are a number of other manifestations that, that uh, reflect this attempt, this effort to try to find ways out, find an exit from this uh, democratic room and democratic game where the foreign party wins all the time. The fourth point to note here is that um, 
when we returned to elections in July 2011, um, the results were the same, even though the rules were rigged. Uh, since then, there has been a stalemate after the floods, right, the truce, uh, which I think that the truce is uh, going to be transitory. It will not last uh, indefinitely. And uh, something will happen, something will happen. Um, the detours and, and uh, deviations have had a price. And here is a key of uh, what is uh, the main contribution of my talk. It appears as though the monarchy has been compromised up to a point. So it appears that the uh, monarchy has been compromised up to a point uh, owing to this actual events that happen, right? Actual events that happen. So first, uh, the coup itself, the, the coup, the night of the coup, but we can even put that aside. Um, second, the coup government uh, was led by a um, uh, General Suryut, of course, uh, General Suryut Jaranon, who had been a previous councillor. He, he stepped down to be the prime minister, and afterwards, he was elevated back to the Privy Council. Um, so that, I think, was compromising. Third, there was the um, funeral incident that I don't need to elaborate. Um, fourth, you know, this judicialization has been very costly because it has failed. It has failed. It has not been able to keep the Thaksin parties at bay. They keep coming back. And the utter failure and I said this with sadness, it's going to manifest itself when the banned politicians of Thai Rak Thai re-enter the fray on May 30th, 2012, in just a few months. So you can dissolve a party, you can dissolve it again, it keeps coming back. You can ban politicians and, you know, for all their warts and shortcomings and sins and so on, there, and they have a lot of sins, Thai politicians are very corrupt. The banned politicians under Thai Rak Thai were the best political talent, whatever it uh, was that Thailand could offer. Right. Banned for five years, five years. Well, they're coming back. Uh, so judicial coups, judicialization have failed, and that has been compromising. The army chief keeps compromising the monarchy. Right. The army chief, you know, he has a habit of saying this um, uh, foreboding, threatening, intimidating comments like, uh, you know, before the election, you better vote for the good people, right? Uh, if you vote for the same people, we'll have the same problems. Well, people voted for the same people. <laughs> and, 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 you know, when he said that you yeah, vote for the good people, we're going to protect the crown. If you vote for the same people, we'll have the same problems. This dragged the crown, the monarchy, into the fray. And when the results were the opposite, well, that is compromising. And, and uh, I'll just make one more. And, and there are a number of uh, episodes that we could come up with. This is uh, one more. Is the, you know, the appointments of uh, the 18th and 19th Privy Councillors. Uh, the 18th Privy Councillor was appointed in on April 8th, 2008. The person was a, a justice minister during the coup government. So the coup government ended in January 2008. Justice minister became privy councillor number 18. We have 19 altogether in April 2008. So the number 19th, the last spot, went to um, an air chief marshal uh, who was a, a coup maker uh, in September 2006. And that happened in uh, February 2011 appointment. Uh, and this uh, is not lost, I think, on many people's radar screens. Uh, the, the February 2011 uh, appointment of uh, Air Chief Marshal the Kumeka and the head of the Council for National Security after September uh, 2007 uh, was another episode. So my last uh, point really is about uh, this is why we have this seminar. And this is because there are challenges to the establishment. You know, it doesn't, these challenges do not arise from a vacuum. They, they come from somewhere. I mean, all these cases, and we, uh, I'm not going to preempt the excellent panel this afternoon, and uh, 
uh, marvelous uh, lineup of uh, uh, the three speakers who will talk about the role of the monarchy and so on. The r number of cases um, of Les Majeste has uh, risen. Unsurprisingly, it has not risen out of a vacuum because of all these uh, phenomena that have happened. Um, so the latest, you know, we have this Niti Rad, we also have the campaign to um, amend Article 112 um, and other challenges in the literature. There's a lot of challenges. I think if you step, go outside Thailand, the cause is lost. If you go outside Thailand, you go ask the foreign scholars and so on, they know what's going on in Thailand. They know that there have been judicial manipulation. They know that there have been democratic distortions. Uh, but in Thailand, you know, it, it, it seeps in um, more slowly because of the control on information and the repression. Uh, so w what this means <laughs> um, is that uh, we will have, uh, uh, we, 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 the reform is imperative, reform, reform is imperative. Uh, and the key to me is, uh, I think that it will happen, right? The, the way that things are now, uh, it's kind of like we're in a, uh, a long goodbye, uh, a prolonged twilight uh, in an extended endgame. And as long as the twilight is prolonged, nothing will happen during this time. It will be just a face-off and you know, there will be a holding pattern. Thailand will have a kind of a uh, royalist uh, lockdown. You can have a seminar, you, but if you step over the line, shh, that's it. And, and we've seen it, right? People are in jail, they don't get bail. Um, and these two guys, uh, these twin guys, uh, they get bail. Um, <laughs> and this, this is very clear, this is very clear, and this is how um, it, it has been um, determined, and it has been deliberate. But the way forward, uh, and, and here is very risky, because I think that there will be a, a lot of pent up demands for reform, right? And by the time that uh, the reforms do come. What has been proposed now will seem very little. It will not be enough. It will not be enough. The reforms that are being called on by, by Niti Rad, grow up the campaign for 112, they seem huge, you know, making the uh, the, the palace, the, the, the principal private secretary's office to, to, to charge people for less majeste instead of anyone charging anyone, or eliminating the minimum uh, sentence for less majeste convictions and so on, seems huge. And, and there is a brick wall. Um, it, there's been stonewalling and just a, a brick wall against it. Um, and uh, it looks like a lot today, but I'm afraid that if uh, it's pent up uh, in the future, it's going to not be enough. So uh, the, the, the challenge for us um, in this room and beyond, of course, there's going to be a lot of right-wing vigilante stuff uh, uh, that we will see. Uh, but the approach is, uh, is very key. Um, we have to approach this without an axe to grind. It, this has to be an adjustment, a post-Cold War adjustment. And we, we have to avoid the temptation to go back and undo a lot of the sins from the 1912, 19, you know, 30s and 40s, and especially in 1976. Uh, this is a, uh, a post-Cold War uh, reform that is uh, imperative. Uh, if we approach it like that without an axe to grind, I think we have a better chance of seeing it happen. Thank you.